Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? All right. So we're going to do one more uh, polar exercise, and then uh, we're going to do uh, go on to the new, new stuff, fun stuff. All right. So today's the 22nd. Uh, so page uh, one there. So, uh, all right. So, here we go. I can say uh, so exercise. So let let r equal to um, how about uh, one minus twice sine theta on uh, <coughs> 0 less or equal to theta less or equal to 2 pi. Okay, so then, um, so uh, this is uh, one of the, you know, just like, just like you're expected in rectangular coordinates, you're expected to know what cosine looks like in rectangular coordinates. And uh, in rectangular coordinates, you're expected to know uh, what a parabola looks like. You know? uh, in polar coordinates, this is something that uh, you're, you're expected to know what it looks like. Okay, so what does this one look like? <laughs> something, something like that, okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, sort of uh, narrow it down. So is this a, is this a rose? So is it a rose? Now, it's not a rose, so uh, so this is an aside now. So is it a rose? It's not a rose. No, because uh, because um, uh, all roses look like this. They look like a multiplied by cosine of uh, n theta where n is a, 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 a positive integer, positive uh, integer. Uh, greater than or equal to two. And uh, A represents the radius of the circle that it would fit inside of. So is, this, uh, is that thing a rose? No, it's not a rose. OK. So uh, what is it? Cardioid? That, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But uh, in fact, those all belong to a particular group that's in the, in the textbook, mentioned in the textbook, called uh, Li Lima or Lima? Could be Lima. I don't know. Uh, Sone. I'm trying to remember if this is a C or an N or an S. Yeah, it's a C comma, right? Like that. Some letter that I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, so this is a Lima Sone, right? And uh, Lima Sones uh, are the things that uh, have this form. They have the form A plus B multiplied by the cosine of just a single theta, okay, or a sine, right? So, uh, so this is a, a limosone, okay. And then I, you know, I gave you a little, uh, uh, you know, mentioned that uh, you need to you need to consider what uh, r is equal to a plus b multiplied by cosine of theta. You need to uh, plot those for various uh, for various b's and a's to figure out uh, which is which. Okay, so uh, if you didn't do that, okay, fine, but uh, you need to do that very soon, <laughs> all right, because it uh, will be very helpful for you to know what these look like. Alternatively, you could just plot a whole bunch of points real quick if you have enough time to do that. Okay, so here's the, here's the deal, is that uh, this is a, this is a, uh, a limosone, and uh, it is, uh, has uh, symmetry across the y-axis, the symmetry is going to be across the y-axis because it's sine. If it was cosine, there would be symmetry across the x-axis. Uh, so uh, this particular one 
is going to uh, look like. So this, so the first request is to sketch what it looks like. Okay. So because it's a, a sine limosone as opposed to a cosine one, that means there'll be symmetry across, uh, across the y-axis, like we said. And uh, it's going to look a little bit like a cardioid, that thing that we drew before. But what a cardioid is, a cardioid is a special case of a limosone where the, where the loop has uh, shrunk to a point, and it becomes pointy there. So this is like a cardioid that has a, a loop inside of it. So it's going to end up looking like this. So, uh, well, when theta is 0, right, then uh, what's r when theta is 0? It's 1, right? So then we're going to come from, uh, from 1 over here, and we're going to go to the origin right there, and instead of bouncing off of it and making a, a pointy place, a non-differentiable a non place there at, uh, at uh, the origin, we're going to proceed through the origin and make a loop. Okay, then uh, we go back to the origin, like that, and then now symmetry. All right. So that's the, the sketch of it. Any question about the, the sketch? So this is frequently uh, referred to as the inner loop of the limosome. Okay, so now uh, I want you to, uh, to I want you to find uh, find uh, the area of uh, the limosome <clears throat> but uh, without the uh, area of the inner loop. Okay, so does everybody understand what, uh, what's being requested? Okay, so, uh, so find the area and then uh, let's make a sketch to make sure that uh, we all agree and understand what, what area it is that's being requested. So what area is being requested? I'll give you a chance to sketch that out. Okay, so then the area that's being requested is uh, just that much, right? Okay, so now uh, here's where you have to be very comfortable with uh, how this, this process works. So when you first learn about uh, integration, when you first learn about it, uh, it's always done in a rectangular coordinate system. And what you're saying is that, uh, oh, I see that shape there, and uh, I don't know anything about that shape, but uh, I know about rectangles. I can find the area of a rectangle. That's base times height. Uh, so then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that shape that you gave me, and I'm going to cut it into like, you know, maybe like 10 rectangles. And uh, then I can find the area of those rectangles. And then I can estimate the area that you asked me about by just uh, adding all of them up. But that's just an estimate. Okay. And then, then the, you know, the engineering idea is that, oh, we just, you know, if 10 rectangles isn't enough, then maybe, maybe 100 rectangles is enough. So eventually there's going to be enough. The calculus idea is, uh, well, let's just, you know, what would it be like if we just, you know, said it was, if we used infinitely many rectangles? So the idea of taking a shape 
if you're if you're reckoning the shape in uh, in uh, rectangular coordinates, the idea the the idea of integration is that oh, we'll just cut this thing into infinitely many infinitesimal rectangles, and then add them all up. That's what an integral is. Now we're not in rectangular coordinates. We're in what coordinates? Polar. So instead of cutting stuff into, into, into rectangles, what are we cutting them into? Sectors, right? We're cutting them into sectors, which is to say little wedges of a, of a circle, like little, little pieces of pizza or pieces of pie, whatever you like. And, uh, and uh, that's what we're doing. You know? So we're saying, eh, I'll cut it into 12 sectors and then, uh, and then you know, do it. Uh, but if 12 isn't enough, you know, the, it, from an engineering point of view, you know, maybe, maybe 200 is enough. I don't know. The calculus idea is that, uh, well, let's just use infinitely many infinitesimal sectors. Okay? So now, here's the deal. So what is the, what is the, uh, the uh, area formula? <clears throat> so the polar area formula? It is integral alpha to beta, and then what, where those are the, the beginning and ending angles, and then what are we integrating? What is it? Yeah, half radius squared d theta. So one thing I want you to observe about that formula, one thing I want you to observe about that formula is notice that we're squaring the radius. Notice that we're squaring the radius, which means that uh, in some sense this formula is blind to whether or not the radius happens to be negative or positive, right? It, uh, it can't tell because in the end we're squaring. So, so uh, now in the limosone, in the limosone, is there a time when the radius is negative? When is the radius negative in the limosone? The loop, right? The inner loop, uh, the radius is, is negative. Okay, so in some sense, the, the area integral like, can't, uh, can't tell that. It can't uh, see that because we're squaring after all. So here's, uh, I want you to observe what, uh, what that formula will do. Suppose, <clears throat> suppose we uh, integrate. from uh, 0 to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so I'm, now I'm going to draw a whole bunch of, a whole <coughs> bunch of limosomes so that you can kind of see what's happening. So now angle zero is uh, the horizontal, positive horizontal axis. Okay, so here's a limosome here. There's one. <clears throat> There's another. Another. So suppose that uh, in the first place that we integrate from like, from zero to maybe like this angle right here. So if I call this angle alpha. So if we go from zero to alpha, then what part of the limosome will we have a, what part of the area of the limosome will we have accumulated? Just that little bit right there, right? That uh, we traced. So we would get uh, that much area. 
And there'd, there'd be a little bit on top there that we haven't quite uh, gotten to. Right? Now, uh, so this point right here, that's the intersection of that angle and the limosome. So that point uh, that's right there. I could grab that alpha and wiggle it around a little bit, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then you'd see that uh, green area also, you know, wiggling a little bit. And now what I want you to see is that uh, if I grab that alpha and I, and I uh, increase the angle just a little bit further, then that blue point right there will hit the origin. It's going to hit the origin. So, so there's some angle that's not too much further where, where we hit the origin. And uh, just eyeballing it, it would be like maybe like right here. Okay, so what I'm saying is that uh, if we integrate from zero to that, to that new alpha right there, then we would get just that little uh, hill or bump or whatever you want to call that that, uh, is, that is above the horizontal axis. <coughs> we would get uh, all of that, right? Now, if, uh, if we go any further, if we go any further, than the point that's uh, tracing the limosome. Because remember, I'll, I'll, draw, I'll draw the limosome one more time. And uh, I'll draw it, uh, you know, wa watch how it happens. The radius right here is positive, 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 zero. So the radius is zero right there. And now the radius is negative, 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 zero again. Now the radius is back to zero. And now you draw and the radius is positive for the rest of the time. So positive, 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 positive. So can you see it? Now it's drawn. So what I'm telling you is that if from here we increase the angle any further, the radius is going to be negative. But uh, notice that the formula is squaring the radius, so then the formula is like uh, oblivious to that fact. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, if we go any further, say to like uh, maybe like uh, right here, then we will have gotten all of that uh, hill that's above the horizontal right there. And then because the radius is negative, in fact, uh, we will come down backwards and to right there, and we will also have gotten this much of the inner loop of the limosome. We will have gotten that much of it. So can you see it? So now, if I grab this angle right here, if I grab it and I wiggle it, wiggle, 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 like that, you'd see, uh, you'd see that area right there would be, uh, would be wiggling. That area wouldn't be changing. It'd just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So if I, if I take this and push it like that, you'd watch that whole inner loop fill up. Can you see it? So now, I could take this point and it will, it will push all the way back around to the origin if I push the angle far enough. Back to the origin. Okay, so now I'm going to go, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to do that. So that angle is going to be, you know, about right here. So, you know, we've gone from zero to that angle. We will have picked up all of this stuff on the top there. All of that stuff on the top. And uh, in fact, we will have picked up the whole inner loop. Okay. Then now, if I if I take the if I take the angle and uh, pull it all the way down to the uh, to the uh, negative horizontal, just if I take this and go down to the bottom, then what will I have? Right, I'll have, I'll have all of that. So if, if this here, if alpha is right there, if alpha is pi, then we will have gotten uh, the hill thingy on the right, the inner loop, and uh, the hill bit uh, on the left. Can you see how it's uh, painting? Okay, uh, now here's the deal, is that, uh, Suppose that, uh, 
Suppose that uh, I've taken the alpha right here. Now it's at pi. Now it's at pi. And uh, suppose that I take the alpha and I pull it all the way down to 3 pi over 2. So I give it a, I give it a, a quarter turn all the way around down to 3 pi over 2. So maybe just as an intermediate step, suppose that I go to like maybe like right here. Okay. Then, uh, well, that means that uh, we would have gotten this top bit, this top bit, the inner loop, uh, and we would have gotten all this. Right? We would have gotten all that. Can you see it? So, like, uh, what I'm saying is that from here, swing that angle down, and then we're getting that much more. Now take this angle and put it put it at uh, three pi over two. Put it at three pi over two. Put it straight down. Then now now we've got uh, not necessarily a problem, but something you need to pay very close attention to concerning the area. And that is that uh, if we make the angle be pointing straight down, then we will have gotten uh, this top bit, that top bit this uh, bit on the left, the right half of the loop, but what about the left half of the loop? In fact, we will have gotten the left half of the loop twice, right? Because we would have gotten it, uh, we would have gotten it uh, in the first place, right, you know, around that time, but uh, now we're getting it again. So can you see that uh, that bit is counted twice in this process? It's being counted twice. <clears throat> so the left half is counted twice, which is to say You know, drawing it uh, one more time just to make sure you can see what I'm uh, referring to. Is that uh, we will have picked up this left side twice. And then, you know, if we, if we go all the way around, if we just go all the way from 0 to 2 pi, do you observe that uh, we will have counted the inner loop twice? So uh, therefore, uh, if we integrate integrate uh, from 0 to 2 pi, we uh, count the inner loop twice. All right. So is there any question about this? So this idea is the critical idea. If you can understand what the procedure is doing, if you can understand this action, then the rest of it is just formulas. And we're going to do the formulas, and we're going to do that. But is there any question about this? Because in some sense, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no sense in like moving on to the formulas until you understand what it's doing, right? That would be like me putting you in front of like the control station for like a nuclear power station. Like, go get him, tiger, you know? It's not really a good idea until, until you're pretty sure about how all the bits work. <laughs> so is this okay? <laughs> All right. So again, remember what the question was. The question was, find the area of the limason without uh, the inner loop. Without the inner loop. So uh, now, if we integrate from 0 to 2 pi, if we integrate from 0 to 2 pi, uh, how many times will we have counted the inner loop? Twice, right? And uh, how many times did we want to count it? Zero. Zero times. So, uh, can someone give us a strategy? Find the area for the inner loop and then subtract that double from the integration of the normal area? 
from the whole thing, right? So we could, we could, like, uh, we could integrate from 0 to 2 pi. That will have counted the inner loop twice, and we, did, we don't want it at all. So if we can calculate uh, the, the area, you know, integrating the angle all the way around, and then if we can figure out how to find just the area of the inner loop, then we can take, take tw two of those away, and then we'll have the answer. All right. So as a result, so the strategy is, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll make the strategy sort of like this. So I'll say that, uh, you know, just, just this bit that was being requested, just that bit <laughs> is equal to, uh, is equal to, uh, you know, this, where we counted uh, the inner loop, in fact, twice. So going all the way around, and then, uh, then uh, you know, then we'll do uh, subtract two, uh, two, two of those. You take my, if you take my meaning there. All right, so then uh, as for this one, what's the, what's the formula for this? Mm -hmm. Zero to two pi, half, uh -huh. right, half, and then r was one minus twice sine theta. We're gonna square that uh, d theta. So, so, you know, that one, that one is straightforward enough. That's something you could have done, uh, you know, a month ago. Uh, this one is slightly more complicated. So to figure this one out, uh, are we going to integrate 0 to 2 pi for that? Yeah, we've got to find the angles, right? So uh, for the inner loop, we need to find uh, the uh, the uh, beginning and ending angles. So here's the here's the idea. You've got to remember how it's uh, you know how it's being traced. This is why it's so important for you to be familiar with the plots. So again, I'll draw the limasone. So at angle zero, you start out here, okay, at radius one. And then the radius is positive, 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 and then you hit the origin, so that's where the radius is what? Zero. And then the radius is negative for a little bit, so the radius is negative, 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 and then zero again. And then after that, uh, the radius is, uh, you know, positive, positive, all the way back around to the beginning. So uh, the loop, the loop is the part where the radius is negative. But uh, to make our lives simple, uh, notice that uh, notice that the radius, uh, you know, transitions from positive to negative, and in doing so, it passes through what? Zero. Zero. So as a result, uh, the most straightforward uh, way to proceed is to set the radius equal to zero, right? So we need to uh, solve r equal to zero for theta. All right. So that means that uh, we need to solve 1 minus twice sine theta is, uh, is 0. Well, rearranging in totally normal ways, we get, uh, you know, sine of theta is half. And then, you know, that, you know, requires you to either be able to use your calculator or, you know, just to know this uh, stuff. So what, uh, what angle input produces uh, output half for sine? Five or, six. pi over six. Okay, so this would be uh, theta is uh, pi over six. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, understand that, uh, you know, in fact, there's infinitely many solutions, right? There's infinitely many of them. So what that's saying is that, uh, you know, if you look at this picture here, you know, I said that uh, that angle right there that's where, that's where that point hits the origin, and that's where we get just the top half. Okay, so that calculation is saying that uh, this angle right here, right there, 
when, when, when we've traced all the way back around and we hit the origin, what's that angle? Pi over 6. Now, I mean, the way I drew it, okay, it looks to me, anyway, more like pi over 4. But, uh, you know, it's just a sketch, right? So what that's saying is that uh, we should now be able to, you know, if I, if I push the angle forward, then I'll be on the loop. I won't be on the loop forever. Uh, you know, I push it far enough, then finally I'm going to get back to the origin. Where do I get back to the origin? Well, so it's got to be, it's got to be uh, some angle that's right here, right? By symmetry. So if this is uh, pi over 6, and that's pi right there. We know that was pi, right? <laughs> so we need to back up pi over 6. So what's pi less pi over 6? 5 pi over 6. Can you see it? So as a result, uh, the beginning and ending angles uh, for, the, for the inner loop are, uh, are, uh, are those. Okay? So, so as a result, as a result, uh, that means that uh, <clears throat> we could say, therefore, that, uh, that uh, little bit right there, just, just that, that being uh, my artist impression of the inner loop. <laughs> What's the, the area of the inner loop? What's going to be its formula? Yeah. Yeah. 5 pi over 6, half, and then uh, 1 minus twice sine theta, square that, d theta. Okay? So then to answer this question, you've got to evaluate two integrals. You've got to evaluate, uh, you know, that one. Okay. Then you've got to evaluate uh, that one. And uh, you've got to understand the way the area is accounted. So you say, oh, it's, uh, it's that first one minus twice the second one. Does everybody get the idea? Because it's the idea that's important. The, uh, the other stuff is sort of boring. Okay. So as for the first integral, so that'd be uh, integral 0 to 2 pi. And then one, pl oh, no, minus. <clears throat> one minus twice sine theta, square that. Oops, I forgot the half. Ugh. minus twice sine theta squared d theta. All right, so then how do we proceed? We got to multiply it out. There's no other way to go. So we're going to have to, you know, foil that, that, uh, that thing there. So this will be <coughs> 0 to 2 pi, <coughs> half, foiling that out. That would be uh, 1 minus uh, 4 sine theta, and then now those are going to be multiplied, so that'll be plus 4 sine theta squared uh, d theta. All right. <clears throat> so now the half, you know, that's not a big deal. And then, uh, ca you know, can we calculate the antiderivative of, you know, because we, we want to use the fundamental theorem. So do we know the antiderivative of 1? Yeah. Do we know the antiderivative, and that 4 is uh, nothing, right? Do we know the antiderivative of sine? Yeah. yeah. And uh, what about sine squared? What are you supposed to do with that? Uh, you have to do, a, right, uh, you have to use a, uh, an identity that uh, reduces the power. Okay, and remember that, uh, that the, the exchange rate <laughs> for, reducing the, for reducing the exponent, you have to do what? You have to double the angle. All right, so then, uh, so, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do that. So this, no evaluation yet. So this would be, you know, half, and then uh, 1 minus 4 sine theta, and then uh, plus, <coughs> I'll just, you know, I'll write the 4. And then, uh, so what's the, what's the formula that goes right there?
Right. 1 minus cosine twice theta over 2. OK. Now a little bit of simplifying uh, uh, can help. So I'll go ahead and distribute the half in. Or will I? Yeah, I'll do it. Doesn't matter. So this would be uh, what? Half and then minus 2 sine theta. And then, you know, there's a 4, there's a half, there's another half. So in fact, the 4 just uh, goes away. So then we'd have uh, plus uh, 1 minus cosine twice theta d theta. Oh, I see another simplification. So then still no antiderivative yet. So 0 to 2 pi, and then half uh, plus, three, plus, uh, plus 2 halves is 3 halves. So this would be 3 halves. You know, and it's worth doing this simplification, because after all, we have to do the other one, right? Uh, whoops, minus. All right, so it doesn't get, it's not going to get any better than that uh, for the purposes of antiderivative. Any question about getting there? So combining the 1 and the half gives 3 halves. That twice sine theta uh, is, you know, that one. It became twice because the half and the 4. This is the double angle identity. That 4 got divided by 2 once and then again. So the 4 went away. Any questions about getting here? OK. So then now we need to anti-differentiate all these things. So antiderivative of 3 halves is what? 3 halves theta. Three halves theta. OK, antiderivative of negative 2 sine theta? Positive 2 sine, uh, cosine theta. And then uh, antiderivative of negative cosine twice theta? So, right, it would be negative sine. So whose derivative is cosine? Well, sine, right? And then we've got twice theta. But, uh, you know, here's the deal, is that, uh, you know, if we, were, if we were differentiating because of that 2, we'd have to, for the chain rule, we'd have to multiply by 2, right, if we were differentiating? But uh, we're anti-differentiating. So instead of uh, multiplying by 2, we divide by 2. Okay, and then this is 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and then, you know, we can evaluate this uh, real quick there. So, so plugging in uh, 2 pi, that would be, uh, what, the 2s would, would cancel so that we get 3 pi for that one. And then cosine at uh, 2 pi is 1, so that would be plus 2. And then sine at, uh, so theta is 2 pi, so that's 4 pi. So what's sine of 4 pi? Zero. Right? So that's the first bit there. And then subtract. Now I'll plug in uh, zeros there, so that'd be 0. And uh, then uh, 2, right? And then again, sine of 0 is 0. So that'd be, uh, that'd be uh, 3 pi. And then uh, we got to add 2 and then subtract 2, so that'd just be 3 pi. So what that's telling you is that uh, if you integrate the limosome uh, from angle 0 all the way back around to 2 pi, uh, then, you get three, then you get the answer is 3 pi. But to understand that you counted that inner loop twice, right? So uh, and, you know, now we want to do uh, the integral from uh, pi over 6 to uh, 5 pi over 6 of the same uh, thing there. So it would be, you know, we're, we want to we want to integrate half. Uh, whoops. Half uh, that thing there. So one minus twice sine theta square all that d theta. Now, uh, you know, all this work that we did, we were just that was towards 
that was that was to the end of anti-differentiating, right? Which means now I can just reuse all this work, right? And I, I don't need to reproduce all that. So it would be exactly that thing there. Three halves theta plus uh, two cosine theta minus sine twice theta over two. And then now, instead of evaluating zero to two pi, now we evaluate, uh, you know, pi over six to five pi over six. Okay, so now, from here, I'm just gonna just move on because I think uh, now it's kind of boring, yes? I'm sorry, I can't hear you? Well, I mean, so I agree entirely that you're, you're gonna have to end up multiplying by two. So, I mean, if you want to put the two there in your formula, go ahead. But I'm just saying that I'm calculating one integral, I'm calculating a second integral, and then the area will be that first thing minus twice the second thing. So, that, so this right here is the area of the inner loop, and we're going to have to subtract it twice. Once, because we didn't want it, and then, uh, and then again, because, uh, because we want to remove it. Other questions? So you could calculate this, I, I leave it to you. Any questions about this? Any questions at all? Because now we're about to move to something that's uh, completely different. Good? All right. <coughs> so, you know, I'll note. So, uh, you finish this bit. All right, so now we're in uh, chapter 11, according to the syllabus. And uh, we're like completely switching gears to something that's uh, different. So this is section 11.1, uh, which is called sequences. 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 All right, so uh, to give you uh, some context of what uh, we're doing is that uh, when you started differential calculus, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when we got that ball rolling, okay, then uh, we, uh, we, were, we were dealing with situations that were like y is f of x, right? That's the kind of thing that we were dealing with, and, uh, you know, the request was, you know, calculate some derivatives and find some, find the slopes of some tangent lines and equations of some tangent lines and what have you. But uh, the the deal is is that all all such f's they have signature uh, reals to reals, which is to say that uh, they're the kind of thing, they're the kind of function where you put a real in, a real number in, and then a real number comes back out. And uh, you know, you did that in differential calculus, you did that in integral calculus. That was the story. So then, briefly, so this is like, uh, you know, at first. Then, for some reason, you know, we just uh, switched per, uh, gears for like a week there, or a week and a half. Uh, we considered parameterized, par param, I'm missing a T. Parameterized. like this. So now, now the way it was is that uh, we said that, uh, you know, x is uh, some function of t and y is some function of t, uh, some other, other function of t. And uh, the virtue of uh, doing this, the reason to do it, is so that you can consider things like circles, which in this context are not functions, but uh, they can be functions in this context. Uh, what I want you to observe is that uh, what, what this is, is because, you know, t is the input to both of these functions. You know, this function gives its output, and that function gives that, its output. What I want you to understand is what's really happening is that uh, there's a single input, and in fact, there's two outputs. So now the signature in that uh, situation is, uh, one input, two outputs. 
whereas before it was one input, one output. You know, then, uh, then we did that for a little bit, and uh, then, then uh, we went to Polar. We went to Polar, and, uh, and uh, it went back. It went back to, uh, to, uh, to this signature, to reels to reels, because now, now the situation was you put an angle in, and then a radius comes out. So uh, angle is a number, radius is a number. And uh, the, you know, the virtue of uh, looking at in polar coordinates is you can draw things like you know, roses and limestones and whatever. And uh, those aren't functions in the rectangular sense, right? because they don't pass the vertical line test. Uh, but they are functions in the polar sense. But uh, you know, we noted that, uh, that, uh, that polar coordinates and parameterized, uh, polar functions and parameterized functions are related to each other if you consider the, uh, the angle to be the parameter. All right, so here we are. And what it is, in the end, is that we're considering a new kind of function. It, and the only difference at, from, from before is that the signature is different, okay? So in the first place, uh, in the first place, uh, we're going to write uh, this. So this set in. So just like, uh, just like that set right there is called the reels, Okay, fun, funny looking R. By the way, the reason to write it that way is just that uh, when you write it in a textbook, it, w when, you're, when you're like typing a textbook or a math paper or whatever, and you want to write reels, you write it in bold. But, uh, you know, I don't have a bold uh, hand or pencil or whatever. So I've got to do something that, that, you know, so you can see, oh, that's, uh, you know, special. But uh, <laughs> that happened, and then what, then what ended up happening is that, is that now in textbooks, uh, they're actually drawn that way. <laughs> now, so it's like it's come full circle there. So this is a, a bold N, and it stands for the set of naturals. The set of naturals is 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 which is to say uh, the set of naturals is the uh, non-negative integers. And um, by, by the way, is there a difference between positive and non-negative? Right, non-negative includes zero, right? So the positive integers start at one. The non-negative ones start at zero. So it's going to be important for us to be able to say both. So uh, when I write to n star, that's these. So the naturals include the, uh, are, are the non-negative integers, and then uh, n star is the, is the positive integers. All right. So all that we're doing is the following, is that a sequence is a function with signature n to r. That's all that it is. That's all it is. But, uh, you know, the textbook likes to, like, uh, make it, like, a big mystery about uh, what it is. So uh, here's, uh, here's an example. Uh, now, one thing that's kind of weird about it is that instead of using the parentheses notation like we do in, uh, you know, when we're talking about derivatives and things like that, uh, what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to write the, the input, we're going to write the argument as a subscript. So here's an example. I could say uh, I could say let. Uh, so we'll make a sequence called f. F uh, f of uh, n. So subscript like that is uh, say like one over n squared plus one. So it's just like a function before, uh, but now I'm now I'm going to write uh, n as a subscript. So <clears throat> we're about out of time, so I'll just ask you to do two things here. What is uh, f evaluated at 0? What is uh, f evaluated at uh, 3? So what's f evaluated at 0? It's 1. And what's f evaluated at 3? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Uh, so I'll write that as 1 over uh, 10. Uh, well, I guess I'll ask one more thing. What's uh, what's what about uh, what's the correct way to respond to this? F 
uh, and then uh, subscript 3.1. That's not defined. Why is it not defined? It's not declared in the Right, it's not, a, it's not a natural number. So this is not defined. Not defined because, uh, just like y'all said, 3.1 is not an element of uh, the naturals. All right, so have a nice uh, Monday.